Okay, so hey, sorry about the late start on this one. I was filming and something happened with the SIM card and we had a corrupted SIM card. So all the footage I have up to now does not exist. So I apologize for that. But we will start over fresh right here. I'll catch you guys up to speed. IS300. It is Senpai Calvin's. Super dope. It has a lot of Arrow Wolf stuff on it. Um, I have most of it off. So here's kind of like the front lip and splitter. Everything else is off and in another room. Uh, really cool hood. Super dope wheels. Super big. Um, probably bigger than, you know, what most of you will be running. But they are wide, dope. They look awesome. So, that's kind of the walk around on the car. He's removed the big wing because we couldn't shut the trunk all the way. So I know you guys have seen this car around. Super dope car. But I needed the trunk all the way open so I could climb underneath it. Uh, we've stripped pretty much everything out of the vehicle. Uh, even though he was a little bit funny because he stripped everything out of it for me but then brought it with him. So uh, check it out too, there's a lot of glitter in here, uh, which is super cool. So we'll kind of show you what we have going on so far. So I've gutted everything here. Also the deck in the rear, there used to be a deck back here that went all the way across. And what we did is we cut it on the seam up top, and then I sat here and drilled out every single one of these all the way down, all the way across, all the way through to make it look like this. So it's nice and clean now, so there's not holes in it, there's nothing weird. Also, now he can get tires in and out uh, once we build the cage. So that'll make it really, really usable and, like I guess, user-friendly. So what we're doing now is ignore this, but this is where we're going to be building the boxes down here in the corners. And then this floor was bent pretty bad down here. So we're going to be, uh, we made these little boxes. It, it sits better than that, but there we go. It sits about like that. And we're going to be welding these boxes in. They're like a two-inch box, and then... Uh, we'll be welding that back up to there to make it all nice and flat and good. It's a little bit floating, but that's okay. Uh, we've started also by taking all the stuff out up here. So we have a bunch of stuff just hanging out. And what I always do first is I do the first main hoop bend. So we bent this one. This one's really nice and tight up here. It actually touches all the way around, and it's pretty much as wide as we can go. Also, for the right location on this B pillar, we had to move these back. So these normally are mounted up here, but the problem is is that uh, if they're mounted here, you can't open the door. And I found that out the hard way because I shut the door and then I got stuck inside. So don't do that. Move it back. It, everything still works just like normal. Um, so that's something easy to kind of do right away. So sorry for the late fix, but uh, you guys should be all caught up now. Later we're going to be finishing the B pillar, finishing that finishing all the A stuff, but you can kind of see from where we're at right now, uh, we're as high as we can be. This thing is literally just touching right here. And once I weld it all in, it's going to be pushed over like that. So there'll be no gap whatsoever. I could probably stitch weld it straight to it. And yeah, it's uh, it'll be pretty nice and cozy in here and give him a lot of room. So it goes way up there, touches all the way around there and then touches here. So I wish it could be up higher in this hole, but because of the sunroof, I'm kind of limited, uh, but I think he will have plenty of headspace because he's a little bit shorter than I am. But even me at six foot one, I I have a lot of headspace in here. So let's uh, yeah, I kind of show you what the next steps are, and give me a second, and we'll jump to the next one. Here's just some cool uh, stickers. He's got a ton of stickers hidden everywhere, all over the car. So that's a uh, kind of the nice part of it. But anyways, uh, people asked me last time what I'm using. I normally use this pipe bender to JD squared. I love it. It's the right die, which is a 5.5 on inch and a half so that we have the right radius for all of the, the pillars to make them fit Formula D and FIA legal spec for all of your uh, like Rally America type stuff. So that's primarily what we build here. But uh, yeah, next we'll be installing the top bar up on top of the hoop and it will be up there. So we're going to connect this side to that side and push these guys out a little bit more. They can move out maybe eighth of an inch. So that'll be perfect, nice and tight. Okay, so we have now kind of completed and gone a little bit farther with everything. So if you check it out, we have welded all this in back here, all the way around. We welded in these triangles or these triangle plates that we built. So pretty easy little plates. Uh, we built them all the way around. Then on the front, we built some boxes, uh, mainly because I think someone messed up this floor prior to us getting in here. It's very uneven. It kind of has a big bubble and some weird stuff going on that that side doesn't have. 
So we built the boxes. Uh, that's what they look like. All welded in, completed. So really simple boxes. They're only about two and a quarter inches out to try and keep it enough room because he's going to put his carpet back in here. He wants full carpet and everything. Uh, also with the, the bars here, they're tucked very, very close. You can't even see a gap through them. And then this top one is tucked up to where it actually hits going all the way across on the top. So made that quite nice for him. Here's an outside view of it, if you can see. So uh, there we go, outside view. So it actually hits all the way going up and same as on that side. So, yep, we're looking good. Uh, next part is, is to do the down bars. So the bars are gonna go from up here all the way down to the back. And we've actually built boxes back there as well, which I'll show you. So the rear boxes look like this. And that's actually the strongest place we found. We were gonna land them up top, but over here seemed to be a lot stronger. So that's what the boxes, whoops, sorry. That's what the boxes look like from back here. So they should be nice and good to go. So now we're gonna tie the bars in from there up to the top and probably take all this stuff out so we don't catch it on fire. But that's right, that's why we have our handy dandy little uh, water sprayers there and there and everywhere else. So just make sure when you're welding this, be very careful. I had to take the side skirts off on this car. Uh, and if you notice, there's still water down there. I soaked it and had someone soaking the bottom of this because the fuel lines run right up. I don't know if you can see it, but the fuel lines run right up against it. And then uh, literally right where we're welding is where the fuel lines bend right up this, this little section. So quite scary and dangerous. So that's what we're doing now. Okay, so we've now have mounted the down bars. So down bars are all solid mounted on there. And we've actually mounted the X as well. It's a little hard to see in here. Turn my handy dandy little flashlight. There we go. So the X is down. The main thing on the X you want to make sure is that the, it lines up going this way and it lines up looking up that way. And then that your welds are good and it lines up this way as well. So as long as you're all even all the way around, it's uh, pretty much that's about all you got to really worry about on the X. Down here, this is how we ended up welding it. So this way, right triangulated to that. This one triangulated to this. Um, originally, I was going to gusset this bar to the side, except for this uh, hump right here that is the side. It is actually the filler, uh, the fuel filler neck. So I figured that would not be a good idea to gusset it to that. So, and also because it doesn't have one on this side, uh, my OCD would not let me build one side gusseted and one side not. So this is how we did it. We ran the, ran the brackets down the side and you're golden. And then up there, that's what the triangle looks like, or the X looks like from back here. And the key in cages is to build as many X's as you possibly can, because that is minimum four triangles. So the more triangles you have, the stronger the cage and the structure is. So we're building a rear X right there, and then we're gonna build a forward X right now that's gonna go up to here, to that corner, and over to that corner, and straight down to this one, and back over to there. So let's build this middle X, and then I'll show you how I've marked uh, right here for the seatbelt, so that little blue tape. So we're going to be using that blue tape to mark where the seatbelt bar has to be, and it should be that yellow paint line right there. So let's do that, and then we'll start working towards the front of the cage. Okay, so now we put the diagonal bar inside the main hoop. So here's the main diagonal, and it's just tucked up into here. Nice and clean. The main thing is making sure that you have no dead tubes. So every bar has to go somewhere. So all these ones cluster here. Those ones cluster there. There'll be another diagonal bar coming up to cluster all that together. Then we're going to have the seatbelt bar right about here, which as long as the seat and everything fits in perfect, then we're going to attach a bar from here, diagonal down, doing an X in the door as well, making the X big enough so that the speaker can fit through the hole in the X and the door bar can fit as tightly and as tucked against the uh, the actual door panel as possible. So this is going to be our only limiting factor. I might have to come in and then out to the door and back, but we will see how tight we can get it with this guy. If not, we'll just stitch weld it here and maybe run a dimple or run something right against this guy to make it as strong as possible. But yep, that's where we're at right now. Rear X is completed. Uh, rear end actually is all the way completed and done and filled in perfect. And yeah, we're just moving forward and we try and keep it as tight as possible. So nice and tight on both sides, nice and tight all the way up here and all the way down there. Okay, so now we have the main X in that goes to the B pillar and we have the crossbars. I always use a level to make sure they're level and I level it with the top bar. 
level these two and then level it with the chassis to make sure it's all perfectly flat. Uh, I know that for me the shop is a little tiny bit off this way, so as long as the bubble just touches the edge on the right side, it's perfect all the way around, which is where it's sitting right now if you look at it. Let's get it set up. Uh, and if you look, bam, right there, perfect, exactly where it needs to be set. Uh, these bars aren't in yet, but that's the design. They're going to come down into a, another big X right here. And then we're going to install the dimple dies right down there. So we don't need to on this car because it's so tight. I could probably I could probably weld it to it. But he wanted dimple dies, so that's what we're going to do. And this bar will actually end up being like gusseted right against here as well. I think it comes right across here. So we're going to clean that up, clean that up, clean this up, and then weld everything back in and then do the lower part of the door X. And that should be almost done. All right, so here's the plates that we made. This is uh, this one says passenger side top and driver side top. So we went with the small dimple dies. Uh, we use these guys right here. Drill a hole in them and then you press them through. So you go in like that and then the bottom goes in and you just push them down with the press, which is right here. So we press it down and you're good to go. That's how you make all the dimple dies. I'm just going to clean this up a little bit before it actually goes on. And what I've learned from doing it numerous numerous times is not to get yourself stuck in the car so these bars are all ready to go in to be welded this is the x for the doors but i just pick them up move them out of the way that way i can climb up inside and up this way and weld them up here and then weld them through the front so uh yeah keep everything out of your way so you can get in and out of the car also i built it if you notice from the main hoop then forward and then after forward i went to the back and worked myself towards the front and the last thing i do is the door bars so that we make sure we have all the clearance right, the shoulder straps right on the seats. I put them in, mock them in. That's what the tape is right here. One more time. That's the line for this. So it should be absolutely perfect. And yeah, then we're good to go. So let me get these welded in and then I'll show you what they look like. And then we'll do these and show you what these guys look like. Okay, so we've got the X's in and this is what they look like. We actually put a little like dimple, two dimple die plates in them just to kind of tuck them in. Also, this guy is touching down here, and we added three gussets up here to make it kind of cool. That's all the, the welding. Sorry, it's so bright. You either have too bright or not bright enough. But anyways, all the welding's done on it. It is fully completed. You have X's in the middle, X's in the back, X's in the doors. Uh, then it goes down up front, and then up there. And also, all of this is done too. So all of the dimples all the way up are done which we didn't really need them because like I said, it's so close it actually, if you look at it, it actually touches all the way down. So, yep, but uh, he wanted them, so we did them all. So hopefully he is super stoked on the car. We're going to deliver the car. I was going to deliver it tonight, but we just finished up, so probably first thing in the morning. But anyways, that is your E, uh, not E, uh, IS300 cage build with the one and only... Imagine Garage. Okay, so we're finishing it all up. Here's kind of our last little finishing touches. We always add a Imagine Garage plate to both sides. So when someone opens the door or when you're looking down on it, it looks super cool. The last part we need to do is we're going to start notching the dash to get the dash all in and show you guys how we do that to notch the dash and get it as clean as possible and tucked all around here. All right, so we are complete. We got the bride seat in. Yes, it is a real one. I just found out, so I tried to not scratch it anyways. But got that in, got real Takatas in it, and we got the dash in. So the dash fits really, really nice and snug here. Uh, nothing extra cut out that we needed to, so it's seamed right there, up there, and it fits very well all the way across. So we're good to go. Hey, someone left their flashlight on up there, so they will be sad. But anyways, we are done. Good to go. We're going to send him home, put the shift knob back on, and he's ready to drive it home. So, there he is. Ah! Thanks, man. <laughs> You're very welcome. We got the whole crew in here messing around with stuff. So, Oh, there we go. That might help, too. He might need this. <laughs> hey, so thanks for watching this build on uh, how to build an IS300 roll cage. Uh, really appreciate you guys checking it all out, making it all the way to the end. Uh, the cage is done now. We're complete with this car. So if you enjoy the, the build or like this video, press like. If you like all of our videos, please subscribe. It'll let you know when the next video comes out. 
Uh, also, if you haven't checked out some of the other videos, there's like how to build a bash bar, there's how to build uh, drive shaft hoops, all kinds of stuff for, for drifting and for sanctioning bodies so you can qualify and, and be able to go out there and compete. So hope you guys enjoy the video and have a wonderful day.